Can you guys hear me okay? Cool. Um, so like Chad said, I'm here to talk about using custom resources for global state management. So that's a lot of words. What am I talking about? Um, but first, who am I? Um, I'm Sam. Uh, I live in Cambridge. I've been using Godot for about two years. And I made a game called This Side Up using Godot. Uh, this game does not use custom resources. So um, I wish I knew about custom resources back then. But now I'm better. Um, who are you? Uh, you're trying to make a game, and it has mutable state in it. Um, and this talk is heavily influenced by the Unity script scriptable object architecture pattern, uh, which was invented by Ryan Hipple. If you know what the Unity scriptable object architecture pattern is, you can stop listening and tune me out. Um, otherwise, I think I may have some ideas for you. Uh, and this, I think this talk might also resonate with people who have web experience, so people have used things like React and Redux. So what's the problem? Um, some of the nodes in my game care about data that's contained in other nodes. Ooh, kind of scary. Um, a, a simple example here is we have a player who has health, and there's a health bar that wants to represent that health, and maybe our enemy UI, or sorry, our enemy AI cares about your health. Maybe if you're low on health, they want to be aggressive because they think they're going to finish you off, or maybe they're going to like chill out and give you an easy time. So this player health is relevant to two different nodes. What do we do? So there's like a million ways to solve this problem, signals and you know, groups and uh, seen unique nodes. But I'm going to present a slightly different solution. So bear with me. Uh, and if you like your solution, that's fine too. That's cool. I, I think this is an idea that maybe resonates with some people. It's been good for me. So hear me out. Um, so the big idea is that some of your game state shouldn't be stored in nodes. Instead, you should stick it in a globally available resource, a custom resource. So what is a resource? From the, the Godot doc, uh, documentation, resources are data containers. They don't do anything on their own. Instead, nodes use the data contained in resources. So you're probably familiar with some types of resources, such as textures and scripts and fonts. Uh, and for many developers, I think the first time you consider making a custom resource is when it comes time to have a save file for your game. Um, and one kind of very big difference between these first three types of data and this last type of data is that the first three types are often immutable. You know, your, your game probably isn't editing fonts at runtime. If your game is editing fonts at runtime, I want to play your game. That sounds sick. <laughs> um, but your save file is changing over time. So I'm going to speculate that your game looks a little bit like this. You have a beautiful a scene tree. And when you first load your game, you load from a save file. And when something big happens in your game, when the player beats a level, you update your save file. So it's read once, write many times. Pretty common. This is a totally reasonable pattern. My game looks a little bit more like this. I have a scene tree. Something changes, probably something a little smaller than beating a level. Maybe a player draws a card or gains some life. And I write that data to a custom resource. And when the scene tree needs to, represent, needs to represent that data, it reads it from the custom resource. This custom resource is the source of truth for this information. So very simple example here. We have a node hierarchy featuring a label and a button. And the only data in this scene is the amount of times this button has been clicked. But both of these nodes care about this data. Ooh, this is the scary problem from before. So in this, like. I, my point here is that this is super simple. We have a custom resource that really just has that click count on it. And we have a single node that exists simply to make sure that this data is available all the time. So in its ready method, it just creates a new instance of this resource. This is dead simple stuff. OK, that, that was a simple toy example. What does this look like in a slightly more real example? So this is a prototype of a programming-oriented roguelike deck builder game I'm working on. A little bit more complicated than Cookie Clicker. Um, in this game, you play cards that sort of have functional expressions on them. Uh, on the right-hand side here, you can see an expression that says, draw six minus the length of your hand. In the left-hand side, you can see your hand. Your hand has four cards in it. So when we play this card, you're going to draw six minus four equals two cards. But like thinking about why I'm bringing up this example, we need to know how many cards are in our hand. We need to know our cards in our hand to show a preview of our hand. 
We need to show a count of uh, hand length in the little hand preview uh, container. And when we actually execute this card, we care about how many cards are in our hand. So those are three different nodes somewhere in our scene tree that care about this data. This is like a pathological example of like where we need to know data in many different places in our scene tree. That would be a total mess if we tried to measure or synchronize this data with signals or something else like that. Um, so to sort of break this down a little bit in the same pattern from before, we have our player state, which is a custom resource. The player has health. Uh, maybe it starts at 20. The player has a hand, which is really just an array of cards. The player has a deck that's also just an array of cards. <coughs> if you're following along this talk at this point, you shouldn't be surprised to hear cards are also a custom resource. This is all like custom resources all the way down. Um, and again, these are just very simple Godot objects. If you want to draw a card, that's as simple as popping from your deck and pushing into your hand. So, you know, like these state, tran state transitions are really straightforward. Um, and so in conclusion, I think there's a lot of value in separating your game's data from your node hierarchy. It'll enable you to prototype pretty quickly. You can focus on your like state transitions. Um, and then later revisit what the node hierarchy actually looks like and make sure it's like styled correctly and stuff. Um, it also allows you to create modular scenes because your scenes suddenly don't care about what other nodes are present in the scene tree. And it can also be useful for, um, for debugging, because you can just sort of export all of your game state and reload it later and see like, hey, did I fix that bug I was running into last time? Uh, there are a couple of caveats here. Built-in classes obvi obviously expect certain data to be present. You know, you're, uh, this is not like a one-size-fits-all solution. But I do think there are a lot of use cases for which using custom resources to synchronize data can be really valuable. So thanks. Uh, yeah. <laughs>